Hello, I'm Jo Good, and this is the Sheer Luck Show dedicated to our gold viewers. Coming up on today's show is fashion with celebrity stylist Gail Rickoff, and also a health clinic on dementia, and an inspiring, a really inspiring interview, and a great deal of chat, of course. But first of all, I'm delighted to be joined by the actress Debbie Arnold, and the author and the lecturer, Dr. Kadiatu Kenna Mason. Hello, girls. Hello. Hello. Now, I have to be um, absolutely honest here. I know you both, but I've never met you both together. Um, <laughs> and the common denominator here today is that you're both mothers and I'm not. Seven children, is that right, Yes, Maddie? yes. Seven, uh, from what age range? From 26 down to 13. 13? Yes. Good <laughs> Lord. And for you, Debbie, two children? Yes, 35 and almost 30. And we have to just say, Debbie, you were in the tabloids recently as one of the most glamorous grandmothers in the country. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind that? No, I'm glammy, actually. I, I, think, I think the whole nanny thing is horrible, yes. but, uh, or granny. But So I'm glammy. And uh, I love being glammy. It's I great. Aspire um, and, to that. Yes, and, and you also, aspire. Think how many grandchildren you're probably going to have. Well, who Kenny knows? Is. <laughs> <laughs> but they're so gorgeous. They really are. And of course, I've got three grandsons and two daughters. So I've I've now done the whole bit, boys and girls. Yeah, you know. <laughs> can I ask? Can, first of all, Caddy, did you plan on having seven? Did you want? Did you come from a big family yourself? And you thought, I want a big family around me. Well, my father was one of forty-five children. What? So this is in Sierra Leone. So wow. my grandfather had twenty-one wives. So that was a big family. Yeah, yeah. So I was used to big family, but my mother had four children. And I thought, well, I'll have four children. And then it just grew. Both of you have very talented children. You're both very talented in your own right, but you have talented children. I don't know what that must be like, actually, handing the mantle over to your offspring to, to watch their talent grow and how they change in front of you. I'm going to kick off with you, Debbie. Yes, because you directly handed the mantle. Yeah, you well, directly yeah. did as an actress. Your daughter was in Hollyoaks. Yes, but also she started, my eldest daughter started um, when she was uh, uh, 18 months old doing a gurgle over. Gurgle. <laughs> Not a voiceover, but a gurgle over. So I was doing I was doing a voiceover and I was, you know, I was playing a kid. Hello, you know, little And I said, Well, I've actually got one with me. Do you, you know, put her in the studio and she went and, and that was it. And so she went on to do voices. And at, at the age of four, she was the youngest child ever to do a monologue on the radio. Wow. And then carried on doing loads and loads and loads of voiceovers. And she's still she's a top voiceover artist now. But I've always done voices, so she's been working ever since she was a child. And were you ever criticised for that? Were you ever thought of as a stage school mum or Mrs Robinson or whatever they call them? Mrs Robinson, I think yeah. that's quite different. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> don't put your daughter they, they, on the Exactly, but, but Mrs Robinson was quite different. Yeah, was <laughs> yes, yes it's a, that's another show. That's the late night version. <laughs> the graduate. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I, um, I, no, never, because I wasn't pushing her. She wanted to do it and she loved it. Yeah. And, and Caddy, um, Seven children, all mm. extremely talented, all musicians. Mm. Um, five of them professional musicians, I think. Yes. And your son, Sheku, performed the cello at Meghan and Harry's wedding, which was amazing. Were they encouraged? Did you throw violins into the playpen? <laughs> How did it... <laughs> Well, I get accused of being a pushy mother, but actually we didn't bring them up to become musicians. We just thought how great they can play music, how wonderful. And um, it, it was all started off by my daughter. We just bought an old piano and um, they all started off and it just carried on just by themselves. Really. And do you but, play? Well, I played at school, so I can play, but I'm not a musician. And does your play husband anymore. play? Same with him as well. Did you see Sheku perform at the Royal Wedding? Yeah, of course. I mean, what was going through your head? Because you said to us earlier on, you weren't allowed to tell anyone, were you? No, no. I had to keep it a secret until when it was announced, what, two weeks before or whenever it was. And um, no, we sat and watched it at home. And I thought, well, let's have a big party. We'll have lots of food out. I couldn't eat a thing. <laughs> I just sat there. No, because your stomach goes. Because Talia, yeah, my, my youngest daughter, um, she did her first gig when she was 17 in, in, in a gay pride gig in front of 10,000 people, the first gig she ever did. Well, yeah. I was there and I was completely paralytic because yeah, yes. I drank two bottles of wine before she got <laughs> on stage. I don't really know what she did, but I was so nervous. Yeah. I mean, yes. and she was amazing. Yes. Yeah. You know, you think, oh, yeah, don't you? all the nerves it's, for It's them, much worse so. for, for when you're watching them, I think. Than it's worse the, for the mother. Yeah, it's worse for the and, mother. And do you, do you, with your daughters, are they competitive? And with your seven, are they, are they competitive? Not at all, no. 
No, they're not at all competitive. They're competitive when they play board games or sports, <laughs> but never with music. No. And do you have to watch the ego? I mean, I've interviewed your son, Sheku, a couple of times. He is the most understated, mm. isn't he? <laughs> yeah. In fact, you were saying at the royal wedding, he wasn't nervous at all. He was No, he was having a nap beforehand. And, yes, he was having he a nap wasn't. beforehand. And do you um, feel like you've given up a lot of your life? I've given up my entire life. Feel, Have yes. you given up your entire no, life? No, I mean, but gladly and oh, happily. Yeah. I mean, I was lecturing full time and the, the more children I had, it became very difficult because my husband was working away a lot. So yes, I did have to step back and put everything into them. But it was also worth it. I don't see it as a loss. It was just a change. Yeah. And if ever, mm. if one of them, I mean, you, you said earlier on you had a rebel child who didn't go to the Royal Academy. She went to the Royal College of Music. Yeah, but it wasn't that much of a rebellion. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> not really. <laughs> My she today's still did music. But yeah. if any of them said, you know, Mum, actually, I want to give this up now. I want to go and do something completely different. Mm. Absolutely you... fine. My 17-year-old wants to be an actor. Oh, well. So, okay. Okay. Yeah, there we are. <laughs> Advice? Advice, don't. Well, thank you, ladies. <laughs> we'll be back in a while. Now let's take a look at style staples with the celebrity stylist and new member of the Over 50s Club, Gail Rinkoff's wardrobe. She shows us the key pieces which make looking stylish every day very easy. Hello, I'm Gail Rinkoff, fashion and celebrity stylist. I have been doing this fabulous job for almost 30 years now. And I'm here today to talk you through my wardrobe staples, things that I wear and things that are super easy for me to put a look together every day. First up is this incredible suit. I love the color. There's a lot of pink running through this rail here. I love the way it fits. Actually, the trousers are such a good length because I can wear them with heels and trainers. And the jacket is a really lovely fit, slightly tapered, slightly fitted at the waist. I think you can have fun with a suit. It doesn't have to be navy or gray. And also you you can separate everything so you can wear the trousers with a different knit. You can wear the blazer with jeans or over a dress. I mix a lot of high street with high end. And it's great to invest in high end pieces, but if you can mix them with high street, it just gives you a really great look without having to spend a fortune. And in fact, this jumper is a really old Zara cashmere knit. So even though it's cashmere, it was a little bit more expensive. I think I've had it for about five years. So a lot of my wardrobe is super feminine and quite girly, but there are times where I like to look a bit more sophisticated and chic and my next outfit does that very thing. So lovely satin slip skirt, again with a cashmere jumper. This is Reese, and the skirt was £59 from a local shop near me. I wear it with the white boots and it's just super, super cool. But again, the jumper you can wear with jeans, you can wear with tracksuit bottoms, you can wear under dungarees, and the skirt, you could put a blazer over this, a lovely coat, both things really super versatile. Next up, every wardrobe needs a fabulous pair of jeans. They're by Mother, they are super, super flattering. I actually don't wear jeans very often. I find them, uh, a lot of the shapes are not great on me, uh, but these are amazing, a high-waisted flare really fabulous. And then this is an H&M blouse that I bought really recently. I love Ulla Johnson. I love everything she does and it just reminded me of all her designs because of the lovely ruffles and the frills and the broderie anglais. So I've worn it with jeans um, but I would wear it under dungarees. I could wear it with a smart pair of trousers for a night out. So the great thing about high-waisted jeans is that you can wear them with a shorter sweater. I actually tuck this in and it just gives a lovely silhouette. You can wear longer things with the jeans but um, equally you can wear shorter things too and it still looks a great look. So next up, and actually this is for me, two wardrobe staples in one. I mean, first of all, we'll talk about Breton. I have a lot of Bretons in my wardrobe, different weights, different knits, different. So this is a cotton one, um, really good for layering, but I love the little ruffle, just gives it that sort of feminine twist. And then dungarees. I've been wearing dungarees for years and years, and everyone says to me, I can't get on with dungarees, but I just, I love them. It's a little bit like the jumpsuit. It's one thing, but obviously you have to put a top underneath. These these have got a bow on the back, which makes them super cool. I've got black dungarees, I've got blue cord, I've got pink. They look great with trainers. And as I said, Breton is for me a real wardrobe staple. So next up, one of my favorite outfits in my wardrobe is this top and skirt from Me and M. I, as I mentioned, super, super girly a lot of the time, love Sarah Jessica Parker. Grew up watching Sex in the City. I love a tall skirt. And I just love the color of this. I mean, obviously it's 
much better in summer, but because of the knit, there's no reason why you can't wear this in the winter with a lovely blazer over the top. So I turned 50 um, last summer, and I think just because you get to a certain age and a certain point in your life that you have to change the way you dress, I just think, no, have fun. Wear what you love, but most importantly, have a lot of fun when you're getting dressed. Next up is this really, really super, super special dress. I know I've mentioned it a few times, turned 50 last summer, um, but I went on a special trip with my girlfriends and we went to an outlet in Florence, a Gucci outlet, and I ended up buying this dress. It was kind of a real treat to myself. It's really, really special. And I just think, have one special dress in your wardrobe. You know, this is such a great, length it's a great style it's good for dinners it's good for really fancy parties if you're going to invest invest in something that you absolutely love 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 and you know that you'll wear i really hope that i've inspired you um, but more importantly have fun with what you wear and wear what you love oh thank you gail so much i absolutely love those flares in the top perfect for date night now, girls, talking about dating, um, you are single, Debbie. You are happily married. Caddy, can I just ask Debbie, first of all, um, in your Daily Mail article, you said you just get back out there. Is that true? Well, you, I think you have to. I mean, you get out of practice as well. I think when you reach... The thing that annoys me is that a lot of women feel that they need to go for men of their own age or older, and we don't. I think men of our own, we, we age better than men. We're more fun than men. And I think, you know, when, when a guy gets to a certain age, and I, I know you can't put this across the board, but I think anyone over 50 is just boring and always <laughs> been left or something. And really? Been no. left. We want, yes, he's been left. And when a man's been left, they are just the worst. They really are. They're so bitter and angry and we, we're not interested in that. So would you do online dating? Uh, I've tried and it, I, honestly, I went out with this guy. Either, either they, they, get, they ask me about my career and say, oh, what was it like with the two Ronnies? And you think, oh, my God, this is like an audition. Um, <laughs> what and, was it like with the two Ronnies? <laughs> That's another now. episode. Yes. No, no, no. Uh, Ronnie Barker uh, wrote a, a part for me called Voluptua Good Body. <laughs> oh I was the amalgamation of all his fantasies and I had to and, and it was one of those films do you remember the films The Village of the Smiths so I was everybody I was a nurse I was this I was that and it was great so but people asked me oh you know what's it like to work with Anwar Sharif what was it like and you think no I'm, I'm out on date I don't want to yeah. talk about my career but you, can I just say you are working late at night in the theatre there's not a lot of time to date anyway you're in a show mm. at the moment yes exactly at the Millet Sonning the Millet. playing a character who is a cougar actually Cougar, I hate the word cougar. Yes, but she is. I hate the word cougar. But she is a cougar. She's after after young men and she goes around, you know, she's had her boobs done and everything else. I don't know why they cast her. <laughs> no uh, idea, Debbie. <laughs> Caddy, can I, I mean, you are, we need to tell everyone, you are happily married, but you also are running seven careers as well as your own career. Yeah. What time do you have to date at all? Do you know, it was easier before COVID, and I think we got out of the habit, actually, because we couldn't go anywhere. No. So just get, and we couldn't travel. So what we always used to do was part the children, four with one lot of grandparents and three with the other and we'd go off for a weekend or a few days or something like that we need to start that up again I think you need to start can I just ask yeah. a really personal question do you dress up for your husband I don't mean in gear I, mean, <laughs> I truly do not mean that I've got some no, 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 but no, no. But do you when you yeah. buy an out because now I'm single I just buy things I like for myself do you yes. ever think gosh he would like this he would he likes me in these sort of things he likes me in skirts tops whatever well, actually, I have two different things. So I will dress up if I'm going out with him for him or with something I know he likes. But then if I'm going out with girlfriends, then I dress up in what I know I like. So it's a bit of both. But yeah. actually, we have the same taste. So, but he actually quite likes me wearing short things. Um, well, short you're tiny and beautiful, so I'm not surprised. <laughs> Whereas I'm a bit more shy about my body. Is there an age gap so, between the two of you? No, only two years. And you, so he's older really or count. younger? He's older. Oh, it doesn't count, Debbie, does it? doesn't count. No, no, not at no, all. That's, no, that's all right. And I think men that are older that are with women, yes, I they are fine. Point, yes. No, they're fine. They all look good. They're fit. It's they're the, the ones that are it's, left. It's yes. the ones that are left without yes. the women and they get angry and bitter. You're and absolutely things. right. Men do need women. Yeah, they do. Because if I left my husband, he'd be absolutely useless. Yeah. I don't think he'd even, I don't think he'd even wash no, or no, get dressed. They, but that's so the whole point. They, do, they don't. And then they, they, do. they sort of like, oh. Yeah. And so, but younger guys are different. Yeah. Um, there's Actually, there's a quote in the play 
say that w where, she, where she actually says, you know, oh, young men may be sexy, but they only think about themselves. And that's true. They're always yeah. looking over your shoulder um, at their own reflection. And that is oh. true a bit as well. But but I think it's about energy, really. I mean, look at us. We, we, we've got loads of energy. We, we were, you know, the outside maybe a little different but the inside is the same but also can i just say for your generation caddy i think you've done a really good job on your sons because young men now see us as not equals but they don't see us as old women yes no. you know they, they, they you i've interviewed you your son. he just treats me you know he doesn't think oh god i'm being interviewed by some 67 year old <laughs> woman do you know what i mean there is a whole yes. different outlook there's i don't think there's a generation so. gap so much now would yeah. you agree no i agree and, and with my kids my ki actually my kids are older than me yes I know what mommy yeah. oh, what, yes. Uh, what are you mommy what are you wearing so i was like oh is it too young? No, it's not young enough. Yeah. You know, why are you, why are you dressed like that? Put the heels, you know, do yeah. this, look yeah. better. Something I have like exactly this. the same. Really? Yeah. They give me fashion tips yeah. and they Everything. tell me how to do my makeup. They give me clothes. Yeah, we share the same we clothes share. a we, lot we, of the time. So half the time, they, yeah. they, you know, I think, oh, I'm going to wear that. Where is it? Yes, and I bring exactly. up, you know, I most that. of them, they don't I live with me. That. And I, I come home and my clothes have gone. I love yeah. And I think, this this is ridiculous. <laughs> Would you introduce your daughters to someone you're dating if it was just, you know, a, a casual date? It Definitely. Wasn't... Definitely. Do you? I, I would, yes. And I bring them home and, you know, they, they you, know, you can see them scrutinising. <laughs> Do they? Do yes. they go in the kitchen and giggle or anything like that? Oh, no, no. Just... The, the... No, it's because they're more they're more sort of thinking, oh, I see right for you. Most of the time they go, he's too old if I've brought home an older, you know, a guy my own age. But they keep saying, you know, we've got lovely friends. Like, I yeah, can't yeah. go out with one really? of your 37-year-old yeah. <laughs> friends. Do you know, at school, I was voted MILF of the year three times. <laughs> I was. Really? Are we surprised? <laughs> Are we surprised, everybody? Um, I absolutely love chatting to you too. Thank you very much indeed. Now, I also caught up with this amazing Wonder Woman, Jo Malone OBE, and we had a really good talk about her business and her new adventure. Jo, hello. Hello, Jo. <laughs> <laughs> we have to say we have met before and I'm going to pick up on that at the end of this because there is something you gifted me many years ago in Annabelle's actually. Do you remember that time in Annabelle's? Um, what a life we lead, huh? <laughs> we were just saying this wonderful ring light, if only it could follow us yeah. through life. Um, we are women of indeterminate age and when you started your first business, you were a spring chicken. When you started your next business, and I'm putting this discreetly, you weren't. So what was the difference? <laughs> oh, um, well, age, I guess, and experience and time. Once you've done it once, you know that naivety, which is your best friend in the yeah. first place, is not necessarily there in the second because you know the pitfalls, you know how hard you can fall yeah. and how hard it, it hurts when you hit the ground. So I'm going to be 60 this year. Yeah. I still feel 30. I still have... My mind is so full of ideas and with age, I've been able to join the dots really fast and really quickly. I can see all the shortcuts. And, I, and so the second business was a very different experience than the first. The first was almost like tick, 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 everything ran beautifully. Joe Loves did not in the first two years. It was, it was such a drain on finance, although I knew my creativity was unbelievable. If I hadn't had that, if I didn't, and I couldn't create fragrance, it would have been a no-go. You said in your book, you said with your first business, you said, I never wanted to let my mum down. I never wanted to let my family down. In, in your second business, is it you you never wanted to let down? Because you'd set, you know, you were Joe Malone. I never see that status, Joe. <laughs> I, I really don't. I think success is as good as today. You know, uh, and I'm never fooled by what has been achieved, although I'm proud of what I achieved. I just want to succeed. It's not about letting myself down. It's about that. I love that chase of business. Mm. I think I'm a really positive human being. And I have that very analytical mind where I see where I am. I see where I want to go. And I figure out the fastest way of getting there. But not only that, I see the vision ahead, and that's what drives me. So, and if I, uh, failure for me is part of success. Yeah. And failure teaches us resilience. Yeah. It makes us warriors. And when we look at the world we're living in, 
Resilience is probably one of the greatest attributes we need in business right now. Can we talk about a business? Because you said you also said there's always when you start a business as an entrepreneur, there's a crossroads, there's a tu- yeah. there's a turning point. <laughs> and in your first business, somebody bought a hundred, I think a hundred products. This woman from next door or something. In your second business, in Joe Loves, you've admitted you had challenges. What was the crossroads? What was the po- point when you thought, yes, actually we're on an even keel? Mm. So I was so naive in the second business, more naive than I was in the first, and it wasn't a good naivety. I assumed everyone had known I'd left Joe Malone, and I'd gone for five years. You know, five years is a long time. Everybody thought I was still there and I was still creating because it was my name. And you know, good lesson if you're selling a business and it's your name, you you have to realize that you will be part of that business forever. Mm. You can never walk away from that. But the second business, it was it was so hard and I created four fragrances and two candles in the beginning and were launched in Selfridges. And I was so desperate for Joe Loves to not feel like Joe Malone. I went with this hideous packaging <laughs> and you can see it online and I don't mind anyone having a good <clears throat> giggle at my expense and it was like this it wasn't even a beautiful red it was like a dirty brown red and it and it was the only one we could afford this that we, we couldn't afford our own uh, our own coloring but the fragrances were good I knew if the fragrances weren't right um, but it was like walking through treacle um, yeah. it was such hard work I thought I'd got back on a global stage yeah. and the world was watching and I was in my underwear. <laughs> That's what it felt like. And, and I vulnerable. Skipped, very vulnerable. And we had about two years and every single week I said to Gary, please can we fold it, please can we? And he'd say, one more week, one more week. It was when we, he gave me the keys to Elizabeth Street, the little oh, shop. Oh, I love that shop, yeah. And... I walked in and immediately I felt like a shopkeeper. And in fact, it was the shop where I had my first job at 16. Oh no. So I literally, I walked in and thought I'd been here before. Yeah. Uh, and so we created what it is a big J, glass red J. And we created, I created tapas for your nose, for courses. And it was the thing that transformed our business. And, and when I look back now, that vulnerability was an important part, yeah. it was an important ingredient. You reinvent yourself all the time. I mean, just that anecdote about the tapas bar, no one had done that before. Mm. Do you think people have to have a gimmick, they have to have something new? Or can you just go with something that's already out there but make it better? What this world needs is storytellers. You know, for me, I'm a gatekeeper of scent memories, I'm a storyteller. And as people walk through that gate, yeah. they go, oh, I remember the South of France when we went to a wedding. And in COVID taught me that. I yeah. sat in four worlds and I created traveling around the world with your sense of smell. So I think what people need are storytellers, but we need entrepreneurs more than ever. And entrepreneurial companies, you can often straddle. I, I, I was talking to a friend of mine just recently and, and I said, in order to cross a stream, it's safer to stand on two pebbles and balance yourself. And when I say that, it's sometimes you have to keep your nine to five going yeah. and you get your second business up and running. Foot in both camps, uh, have, have your foot, have your feet on two things that bring you a little bit of stability. Give yourself options. When people hear your story and hear you speak, and they think to themselves, God, I, she's not the smartest person. She never went to university. She hasn't got it, but she did it. She can do it. I can do it. And that's the attitude that starts to change. So yeah. when did you say you were dancing on the beach in Dubai with uh, your friends? Last last November. And it was my birthday. And I wanted to do a birthday. I wanted a Mamma Mia moment. And my birthday is the 5th of November, which is bonfire night. Couldn't get a license to do fireworks on the beach. And I thought, okay, what can we do? So we had fire dancers. Oh, oh it was absolute paradise. One long table. And I scented the whole thing. We had, uh, we had drinks by the pool and you walked down all these lanterns onto the beach and it was, everyone was barefoot and it was just simple and beautiful. In fact, there's a picture of my husband and I and it is the happiest picture I've ever seen. Yeah, but you and us. Gary seem to be like this unit. He's always Not been. always. <laughs> And that's a whole different discussion. I just, I could talk to you forever, Joe, but, w- but we must finish and go back to the studio. But can I just ask finally, the scent, I've been sitting here next to you trying to discern the scent that you are wearing this morning. 
just tell everyone out there, they can't smell it, but I think there's a bit of Dubai in it. It's, um, so I'm on a huge adventure and I'm going off to live in the Middle East for a bit. And um, one of my favorite things is 1001 Arabian Nights, the stories. And I decided I'm gonna create 101 notes of not just in Arabia, but all the way around the world. And this is the first one I created in Dubai. And uh, her code name is Damas, uh, but I've nicknamed her the Dame. And she is a white gardenia, a powerful, beautiful flower, encased and cradled in a lantern of oud. I am going to spend a year creating, and I'm going to tell the stories of each note we create. So I'm going into Saudi to pick roses. I'm going to Thailand. Um, I visited the oud factory and was I had the bahur all in my body. So I'm just going to tell 101 stories of notes, and then you will tell me a story of your life, and I will recreate that with 101 notes within five. Oh my that's, that's my mission, that's my adventure. What a wonderful um, vision, that's extraordinary. Um, and you'll do it, I know you'll do it. Jo Malone, thank you thank so you. much. Thank you, thank you, Joe. Absolutely thank you, everyone. You again. So welcome back, such an inspirational interview. I could have talked to Jo Malone forever. And I do love those paintbrushes, I absolutely love them. Now talking about what I love, girls. Yes. What are you watching? What are you listening to? What are you reading at the moment? What are you indulging in? Ah, uh, Happy Valley, I think. Uh, I'm just, oh, wow. It's, it's so amazing. I mean, were you watching it? Did you, have you watched it? No. So no. just explain to those who haven't followed it. This is, um, I'm, I'm very interested by the leading actress because she comes from soap opera. She came through Coronation yeah. Street, like yourself. Yeah. Um, and this is Sarah Lancashire. Is it her production company as well? Oh, I don't know, actually. I don't know anything about it in that respect. But it started years and years ago. The very interesting thing is about it, the, the kid in it, the plays the young man, they waited till he grew up to do... This, they waited seven years for him to be old enough no. wow. to do this series because he was too young and they needed him older and they waited for him. That so never happens in TV. Never. never. They'll just and, reproduce yeah. someone immediately. Yeah, yeah. And James Norton has literally taken him under his wing when he was a kid, when he starts to do it. So they loved this kid so much and believed in him. And he is fantastic, the kid. And James Norton and him, and he's been helping him with his acting and it's... Wow. Yeah. Would, would you be in it? Have you auditioned for it? No, no, I've never been, I've never been up Is it, it. Are you likely? Are there parts you could play? That's how I always feel. I could have played that. Well, you, I, um... do you? No, I don't feel that. You know, I mean, yeah, I could have played her sister. Yeah. I could have played her, actually. Yeah. Uh, why did Sarah Lancashire get it? No, <laughs> actually, to be honest with you. Oh, well, no, yes, you're right. <laughs> be, but, yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's, I mean, it, on the sort of realm of, you know, those sort of reality dramas, yeah. it, it is... Incredible. And and James Norton, you know, you know him for the vicar and yeah, yeah. you know, he's sort of very lovely and he is so nasty in this, so evil and nasty. He's just wonderful. The whole thing is so believable and it's wonderful. I'm going to watch it because oh. I've read so much about it. It's had rave reviews. Have yeah, you go watched back it? No, I haven't. Go back you have to, to the go beginning. right yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. No, I would. I'd go back to, yeah. to see why everything happens. So everyone's you've got raving. three seasons I to watch. I love the thought yes. of them spending time to let the child grow up. Yeah. yeah. Caddy, what are you watching, reading? I'm enjoying Riches, which is on ITVX. And the reason I love it is because I grew up when no one ever talked about black hair or black makeup. or And this programme, that's what it's all about. So it's just basically a story about um, a black family who runs this huge makeup, black makeup business and all the intrigues to, to do. It's a bit like Dallas or yeah, yeah, Disney, yeah. but set in London. And it's just, and all these, you know, things get dropped in about our hair and our skin. And, and it's just, I just think, oh yes, it's like coming home. So I'm enjoying I, that. I, and it's so interesting because, I mean, I do a lot of influencing beauty stuff and everything, and it's still, still slowly yes. finding the right products for the yes. right skin tone. And I know, please talk yes. about South Korean drama. Yes, I'm because obsessed Because you were talking about it. reality drama yes. and the South Koreans have Love got it, it sussed, haven't they? And there's a huge ballooning of all of that yeah. now, which is amazing. So Parasite, the film, it started me off, I think. And then I love things like All of Us Are Dead, which is set in a South Korean school. It's a zombie film. Love that. It's a zombie it's film. It's a long, zombie You must have got that from your kids. Because I started watching that because of you mentioning it. I and I just it. thought, oh my God, this is like... <laughs> but there's a... Can I also... The South Korean film that I remember and I'm older than you is the ladies made made in oh, the 60s I don't know this. yeah yeah check that out but right. South Korea yeah. are killing it yes at the moment, and they're they? amazing and of course squid game oh if you've seen squid that game. Yes. everybody at work you could tell how many yeah. people are watching it because the whole conversation literally around the water cooler was yeah. was squid game which again is amazing podcasts so mm. everyone seems to have a podcast out 
Does your family have a podcast out? Oh, gosh, no. You've got to. <laughs> no. Who needed it? Who needed that? Do you listen to podcasts? I do, I do. But lots and lots of different ones, and there's not really... What happens is my daughters send them to me, and I listen to those. I like the um, How to Fail podcasts. I love those. <laughs> Who presents that? Oh, goodness. Um, is it a different gonna... presenter every time? or? Um, no, it's not, and I should have jammed up on that. You just no, put me on the spot. No, don't worry, because I... But... I no, I'm just going to jump in here and say what I listen to is Diary of a CEO, which is Stephen Bartlett, and what I love it because I do a lot of interviews, but he gets the big, meaty interviews, and he puts it on YouTube. So, you know, you have a podcast, so you're watching it at the same time. Sadiq yes. Khan is the latest one on there, but he's done literally... Everybody, he gets the, he has an hour and a half for a big, long, wow. meaty interview. Yeah, really, really good. Podcast, Debbie. Well, it's not really a podcast, but we have Wonderbirds, don't we? Yeah. Our, our show. So it's more, it's a, it's an online show, but we do interview people. In fact, the last person I spoke to was uh, Russell T. Davis. So he went oh, from the Graham Norton hero. show. hero. Yeah, oh. he went straight from the Graham Norton show to our show. He's wow. been on our show quite a few he's times, so and he's just brilliant. So he's doing Crossroads, isn't he? Uh, no, it, Doctor Who. Doctor Who. Oh, no, Doctor he has, he's actually become the showrunner for Doctor Who. But Nolly is coming out yes. February the 2nd. And I was in Crossroads for five years. Were so you? I'm, wait, I'm dying to see if my character's in it. So, yes, but you know that they sh how they shot it? That they, shot it they, they reshot the scenes that she was in again with her, Helena Bonham Carter, as Nolly. Wow. And they used the old cameras that they used... When they yeah. shot it, so you can see the difference and how they how they used them. And there was no editing. We, we there was no editing at all. If you went wrong, they turned the sound down. I kid you not. Literally, <laughs> Mrs. Overall, just, isn't Mrs. It? Overall, literally. <laughs> Girls, thank you. I've absolutely loved chatting to you. Now. I've had the pleasure of chatting to Sir John Hardy, a world-leading neurogeneticist in the field of neurodegenerative diseases, who in 2022 was awarded a knighthood in recognition for his contributions to human health and dementia research, a cause very close to my heart. Welcome, John. It's really wonderful to have you here. I feel there's a lot of ground to cover, so let's just jump straight in. First off, what causes dementia? Well, let's start with what causes Alzheimer's disease, because not everybody with dementia has Alzheimer's disease. Uh, about three quarters of the people who have dementia have Alzheimer's disease. So just focusing on Alzheimer's disease, we know that how the disease starts with the build-up of a protein in the brain called the amyloid protein. In some cases, and this is a finding that we made about 25, 30 years ago, it's a mutation in the amyloid protein. But in the majority of cases, it's not a mutation, it's something else which goes wrong with the metabolism of the amyloid protein. And we're still trying to dissect what that problem always is, but we're on the way to understanding it. So just in layman's terms then, what is the difference between Alzheimer's and dementia? It's the pathology. When, you, when somebody comes to autopsy, if you've got Alzheimer's disease, you see characteristic pathology. You see amyloid in the brain and you see tangles. In other people with, de with dementia and not Alzheimer's disease, you see different pathology, often including, for example, uh, problems with blood vessels. That's a common other cause of dementia. But there are many, many other rarer causes of dementia as well. Is it genetic? Is it lifestyle? Is it a combination of both? In a few families, it's straightforwardly genetic. In a few families. In the majority of us, it's probably a mixture of genetics and lifestyle types of things. So in most people, it's probably a mixture. Lots of people will be saying, what do you mean by lifestyle? Well, what we, what we know is that a healthy heart lifestyle, all the things we're taught about a healthy heart, seems to reduce your risk of Alzheimer's disease by about 25 to 30%. And what is meant by early onset dementia? Well, as, as, as you know, and the audience will know too, most people who get dementia are in their 70s, 80s, and so on. Um, but there are a few families, maybe a couple of hundred in the country, and this is what we worked on, 
where the, the age of onset is in their 40s and 50s, and they, if you like, get it from their parents. They, if you've got a, a, let's say your father had Alzheimer's disease at the age of, let's say, 45, uh, and his father got the age, had an age of onset of 45, then your chances of having the disease at about the same age are about 50, or 50%. And can you test for that early? Yes. How? Uh, just a gene test. It's, um, it's quite straightforward. Um, you, uh, you go in to see your neurologist and your neurologist would, uh, would take a blood sample and send it to, a, to the NHS gene testing centres. And is it true that it's more common in women than men? That's actually controversial. So there's one reason it is more common in women, and for sure, and, that's, and that is that more, there are more women live to that age. Mm -hmm. But more recently, there's been some questioning of whether that's accurate or not. So I, I'm inclined to think it is more common, but, you know, it's definitely a subject for, for ongoing research. And why does it appear to be, as a disease, more common? Is it simply that we're living longer, so there's more of it? Or it's, you know, was there a word called dementia in earlier days, in former times? Well, I, I think it's getting more common in part because of the increased life expectancy. But I think there's an increased awareness. You know, I think people were ashamed of their of their, let's go back a couple of generations, their demented grandmother, yeah. and she was just locked away, yeah. really, in the family home and not talked about. So I think part of it was there was such a stigma to it that the people didn't get counted, if you like. So that's another part of it. But what I've said about healthy lifestyle also, you know, people were smoking uh, and they weren't controlling their blood pressure. So it's possible that, well, I think, in fact, it's likely there's been a, a reduced incidence over the, last, over the last 20 or 30 years. And is there, I know lots of people watching will think, is there any way you can delay it? If it's genetically in you, is there any way you can slow it down? Well, I think healthy lifestyle is good for all of us, you know, so healthy heart. You know, by the time you're in your 70s, it's too late to yeah. start. Time to start is certainly 40s and 50s. So someone in my family has been recently diagnosed, and it is everything I've read about. It is one of the saddest diseases because you're saying farewell slowly to that person. I personally don't know what I'm expected to do. I don't know when this person says something that I know is just a fantasy or untrue to correct them. Should you go along with it? How do you treat and talk to someone with dementia? What I would say is it's a waste of time arguing and correcting them because they will not remember the argument or the correction. It, you know, I think it's much better to just move the conversation along. Um, you know, the, they, I should say that the earliest symptom of the disease is usually people can't make new memories. In other words, mm -hmm. they can remember things from years and years ago but they can't make new memories. So if you correct them, that's a new memory that they don't remember. Mm. So it's, you know, I think if you argue with them, you're just, if you like, creating a bad atmosphere, upsetting mm. them and, and doing no good. Absolutely. Just move the conversation along is what I would say. Absolutely. You were knighted in the new year for your groundbreaking research, which I think involves stem cell. Is that right? No, it involves finding... We found the first mutations which cause the disease. So what, for the layman, what does that mean? Does it mean soon, within my lifetime, we could see an end to dementia? I don't think we'll see an end to dementia, but... Uh, uh, but I think we are moving into an era when, era, era when we have some treatment. So I said that in the brain, if you look in the brain of somebody with Alzheimer's disease, there's little pinpricks of, a, of a, this amyloid protein. And what we found in a particular family from Nottingham who are, have come very, become very public and very supportive of research is we found mutations in amyloid. And what this told us is that the amyloid is where the, the disease started. And now, for the first time, just two months ago, 
there was a release of um, the information about a drug which, if you like, sucked the amyloid out of the brain and that had a beneficial clinical effect. It improved the, improved the outcome in the patients who took the drug. So the, it was called an anti-amyloid antibody. And this is really the first time we've ever altered the progression of the disease. As, so it's the first time I think we've ever had real hope that we can start to perhaps not yet stop the disease, but slow the disease progress. Wow, congratulations. Yes, it, uh, you know, it's nice to get the congratulations. Of course, my team was large and involved lots of other people too. And the drug company, of course, uh, nothing to do with me. But, you know, I'm very pleased, of course. You're very modest. And, and Sarah, our producer, says, I feel so guilty taking him away from his laboratory. What will you be going back to do today? We're trying, the main thing we're trying to do at the moment is understand how the brain deals with amyloid. How does it deal with it? What cells in the brain are responsible for clearing amyloid and how can we make those cells work better? So I have a small genetics group trying to work on that type of problem. And we're trying to apply the same types of techniques to Parkinson's disease and the other causes of dementia too. So we're trying to you know, follow it up and and find more pathways to develop treatments. Well, we'll let you go. I think you're amazing. So John Hardy, thank you so much. <laughs> it's my much. pleasure. Thank you for having me. I hope it really did help those who are watching, who are going through and helping loved ones deal with this terrible disease. Now, I was very excited to be asked to share a day in my life with Sherlux. So take a look at what myself and my dog Myrtle actually get up to. <music> Say that you end up looking like your dog. Gradually, I think our wrinkles are gonna, you know, like we need Botox, the two of us. I start off, I take Myrtle for a walk at 8.30 and um, then I take my coffee and I go up on the roof and I want you to see the roof because then you'll see how stunning this part of London is. Anyone over the age of 50 who remembers Christine Keeler and Mandy Rice Davis, they were like the it girls. Mandy Rice Davis lived in this block. In the 60s, it was very uh, swinging in the proper sense of the word singing, swimming, swinging. God, it's early in the morning, sorry about that. Good girl, come on, Matt. come on, Matt. good girl. Come on, Matt. up. This is the best bit about the whole block. I come up here, I always have my morning coffee up here just to sort of drink in what sort of day it is. In the summer, we have parties up here and at night, on a summer's night, I love, I just bring my dinner up. Chimney pots at my height up on the roof. They're amazing, aren't they? You know, I always think if I was in a rock band, it would make a brilliant rock video. So we're proud of these. In the summer, they all come out. And oh, <laughs> Now that could get me voted off the residence committee. <laughs> yes, yeah, so Myrtle's just had, um, right, how embarrassing is that? I will pick that up later, everybody. One of the things I do every day is walk down Maravone High Street and I use it as sort of um, therapy, really. I know so many people in this area, and this sounds like I'm the godmother of Maribone, but they ask me to turn on the Maribone Christmas lights every year. So I just walk around saying hello to everyone. What I'm going to do is walk down there and go into the BBC because my radio show is late at night and I don't mind being awake but lots of our guests don't want to come in late at night so I meet them in there during the day, pre-record it and we put it out. You know what, Sheer Lux always want to know what I'm wearing. This is a brilliant coat from Charlotte Simone who is a Marylebone designer truly sustainable. These are acne shoes, matches jeans, and a Bella Freud shirt. Marylebone, there's just, the people just throw money on the stair. <laughs> this is a fiver. And the whole dilemma is, do I confess to finding this or do I just, no, I will tell the caretaker. Oh, you've got to meet my caretaker. This is Jim, who is as famous around here as me. <laughs> They're filming a day in my life. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Look what I found. You need longer than a day. <laughs> so here we are on Marylebone High Street. I don't like walking under ladders. I'm so superstitious. It's because I was an actress. Never walk under a ladder, even if you get killed walking in the road. Bailey and Sage, 
Just come and have a look in here. This is food porn, if you like cheese. Unbelievable. Yeah, lovely spread of bread. And these, so I will often just run in and buy one of these as a treat. I'll come and say hello to the Rixo girls. These are the Rixo girls, everybody. When I do the Christmas lights, I always wear Rixo, so um, what a welcome. I honestly didn't tell them I was coming in. The one thing about Rixo is for every generation, so. But also, I love it. It's like an art gallery. Just look, look, things like this. Bye, girls. <laughs> I'm not embarrassed at loving beautiful shops, because it is like going into art galleries. I just like supporting them. And in the pandemic, all of this was closed. The whole soul had gone out of Marylebone and now it's all come back. It makes me happy. I always feel happy when I walk up and down Marylebone High Street. This shop I love. If you follow me on YouTube, I wear a lot of their clothes and I love them because they're actresses who just started this shop. Oh, pioneers. Hi, are you making the shop look tidy <laughs> for you? No, we're not ready. <laughs> And just back me up, how often do I go shopping for clothes, Clara? Quite a lot. Yes. Have a look at this. So this, I think I've worn it on sheer Lux. It's a lovely green dress with a big kitten bow. And is it called the Martha dress? Jo, you wore it <laughs> and we, we, we sold out. Really? No, honestly. There you go. We've got one left. There you are. That's the power of Joe Good. It's, it's true. <laughs> this is all Liberty print, isn't it? Started the brand years ago because we couldn't find day dresses dresses that you could worry practical that you could put in the machine we wanted everything to be made in london a liberty print fabric will last you a lifetime they're warm they're really warm warm, warm practical day dresses come on george come up here can't have a cuddle as you can see everybody there is a dog theme in my life Clara's husband is extremely famous and I was just in here shopping and Clara said to me, I think I know you and I went, oh, I don't think you do. And she went, I think you've interviewed my husband. Tell everyone who your husband is. My husband is Jason Watkins. If you see his face, you he go, wow. Clara's got no pictures of her husband no, on the phone. No. But She's having to Google him. Dresses and dogs. Oh, oh my God, I found one. How can you not have a picture? Seriously. He is one of the most famous actors. I I believe you don't have it in your life. I have, but it was 2000 and whenever. It was. We go, you see, what a talented family. We're having, a, we're having an event. It's not, it's an, it's an event. It's, it's, a event party, it's a party for London Fashion Week. Friends of the brand, friends of ours coming down. Oh, nine, did you say 19, the night? We're, we're going to send you an invite, okay. so don't worry. Okay, I'll be vlogging that, everybody, yeah, so yeah, don't worry. Uh, Bye, George. Bye, George. He's a rescue. Hi. Oh, this is... <laughs> I have to pretend I don't spend money on clothes and this is the sort of, just come and meet Nat. <laughs> this is wonderful Nat and this is KJ Laundry. If you want to know where I get my Samantha Sung dresses, this is Samantha Sung. Very, very seldom stocked everywhere. This is one of the few stores and I have this maxi as you know. But this is another reason to come to Marylebone Lane because these are exclusive shops with entrepreneurs. And this shop's been here since I've lived in Marylebone. So we will press on and go on our way. So this is where I work. And today I'm just going to go in because I'm pre-recording a band, um, the Jive Aces, who are like my house band for my show. And um, they can't come in late tonight, so we're pre-recording it today. So yeah, I will have to pop in and leave you outside, unfortunately, because they won't let us film inside for obvious reasons. But if anyone watches the one show, this is the one show set. So I come in around here, and that's where I am. Hello, how are you? So done. And oh, can I show you George Orwell? He looks like he's doing I'm a little teapot, short and stout. This is my friend Jane. Obviously, she doesn't know I'm coming, I promise you. What I love about this shop is this is her front room, and she opens when she feels like it. She puts a little sign in the window, so it's open. This is Jane. <laughs> <laughs> Jane is like a phenomenon. She never wants publicity. <laughs> Who is this? So she talks really quietly because she loathes any kind of filming. You don't have to worry. She, she'll be quite happy for this to go out. She, you're just quite um, shy. See? Discreet. She's discreet. <laughs> <laughs> 
Back me up on this though, Jane. When I wore that gold skirt on Sheer Lux, just tell everyone what happened. I had about 50 people phone. I can't get them. <laughs> I can't get them, so I'm sorry. And this is a version of it. It's by the same yeah. people. But it is, look at it, it's, it's absolutely lovely. This is a secret, everybody. Unless you know Marylebone, you won't know this shop. It's called 66. And it opens when Jane feels like it. He's got a sign for tomorrow's hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gosh, very well organised. <laughs> really loud, Jane. 17 yeah. Bulstrode Street. <laughs> oh, how nice. <gasps> Look at this. Don't I just love doing albums? Jane and I are about the same age, and we would just sit at parties. And it's that sort of, isn't it? Just doing this at everyone's parties, just going through the <gasps> Etta James. Just having that breeze of an album falling across your face. Like in this purple. Like purple. This purple. Like purple. Yes, extra. extra small. Will you keep one? See, I've now just bought a blouse. I love this woman. I really love her. <laughs> Hello. This is honestly style. You're born with style. You can't create it. You're actually born with style. Are these Bottega. Oh my God, fantastic. You look wonderful. Anyway, we're going to go and have coffee. I'm embarrassed at how many clothes shops <laughs> I'm recognised in. I always come here for a chai latte after I've walked Myrtle. Look at the coffee art. See, I, I gave you a cold white coffee this morning. Look at that. Cheers, Joe. Mm, cheers. Best coffee in Marylebone. This is Lenny, who does my blow dries. And where is my hairdresser? <laughs> this is Sophia, who's done all the colour. She did all this. This is where you come, actually, to catch up on life in Maribor. Gossip. Gossip. So I'm going into Selfridges um, to film for my YouTube channel because, as I said, these earrings I wear are made by a tiny little independent jeweler. So they now call these the Joe Good Earring. And she sent me an email saying, Joe, we're doing a pop-up in Selfridges. Whether they'll call them the Joe Good Earrings, I bet they don't, because no one knows who Joe Good is here. I mean, I'm huge in Maribor, not quite so big. I'm going to try this way. This is Anna Verdon. It's the accessories part of Selfridges. She's going to turn up, hopefully, so we can have a bit of a chat. Oh. Anna. Oh. Nice, to meet you. nice to meet you. This came from, from my earrings, right? From me wearing these earrings. Yes, I'm wearing them too. She's wearing them as well. So they're I'm called. Not, I'm afraid. <laughs> I honestly met you two in the market in Marylebone, weren't you? That's, well, I met yeah, Alex. Yeah, it must have been over 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah 10 yeah. years ago, and now you're here, at, you are in Selfridges. How many people have earrings named after them? Oh, I am so lucky. You are the... Are they popular? Way. Are they popular? They are very popular, yes. Yeah. Thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs> Just show me the ones around here, because that, the, these I haven't seen before. We claim uh, The idea of this collection was to, for me, I never kind of dared to go into the hearts because it kind of felt a little bit... Intrusive? Fake? Yeah, what? fake. Yeah, yeah. Because hearts have been exploited yeah, exactly. everywhere. Yeah, so I, I love to that. Do something that brings back the heart. Yeah, yeah. In a kind of more, you know, nice rock and roll way. I absolutely love them. I think they're beautiful yeah, and that's, that's very new. Oh, that was I fantastic. Give you a heart, by the way. <laughs> I've seen you rise. From the market. Yeah, exactly. And these were indoors now. Yeah, you're indoors in Selfridges. <laughs> I'm getting a cab to save the blow dry. I can't risk the blow dry. Oh, I mean, they have worked so hard. And to, when you see these young entrepreneurs, you know, do well from a market to then go into, um, into Selfridges, I'm just so chuffed for them. At the end of this, you may have noticed I've brought my Lululemon yoga gear because I'm going to go and do a quick, a very, very quick yoga class. So that's it. I mean, we started off in glorious sunshine. Just look at this. What a day. I feel like I, people are going to say, does she really just walk in and out of shops? And the answer is yes. But they're like my mates. That's my social life. Shopping. But I mean, I'm not, I didn't buy, if you were, I didn't buy a thing today in my defence, did I? You did order purple what? top in, but you didn't spend any money did. officially. I have, God, well remembered, I've pre-ordered a purple silk shirt to go with my gold skirt. One item though. Yeah, that's, that's and that's an investment. I see these as investment pieces.
Oh my gosh, how much fun was that? I really do just shop all day, don't I? I just love what you're wearing though, darling. Yes. The shoes is yeah, I spend my yes. day running up and down Marilyn Brown. I love your coats. Oh, oh, thank you. It's like a, like a catwalk. It, it, it is it my life. Much. Yes. Caddy is like a catwalk. A catwalk. <laughs> That's how I do it. Some may call it banal, but anyway. <laughs> Listen, girls, I have had so much fun. Have you enjoyed it? Loved, Loved it. it. I absolutely love being here, as you know. And I thank you, Caddy and Debbie, and of course, Gail and Joe and John. And I hope all of you have enjoyed it as much as I have. We are back with a regular Sheer Luck show next week with fashion, beauty, food, and loads more. And in the meantime, we would absolutely love it if you would leave a comment below. Give us all a thumbs up and please subscribe if you haven't yet. And have a wonderful day wherever you are. Say goodbye, girls. Goodbye, Bye. girls. Bye. 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 <laughs>